Jan, aviation is driven by a number of forces, in particular money, but let's face it, uh, motive force is the next best thing. You've done some amazing things over the years with a series of power plant cores, but it seems like you found quite a niche with the Honda uh, core at this point, and there are a number of derivations. What's new with Viking? Well, the, the latest now is, of course, we have the 130 engine, which we have had for uh, three years. And it's an inline engine out of the FIT car, F-I-T, Honda FIT. Honda came out with uh, Civic this year, and they're uh, trying to make the Civic a little more interesting for buyers to buy the cars. So they have an optional engine. They have a 2-liter, and they have a 1.5 turbo. And that's the interesting part is Honda is now making turbo engines. Honda was always like kind of against turbo. They were like high-revving, very lightweight parts, lightweight pistons, connecting rods, and making power from RPM. And that kind of changed with the Civic engine. And very exciting because I'm so used to seeing that RPM dial way up there. And now with the boost from the turbo, which is, you know, factory turbo from Honda, we have lots of torque at low RPM, kind of like more of a traditional aircraft engine, but we can maintain that to very high altitudes. And that's, so the Civic engine with the 150, 170, and also 190 horsepower is the exciting part right now. Prices and production availability? Everything is available now. I would say the 170, if we could not deliver right now, the 130 we could deliver like tomorrow. That one is 12.9. The 170 and the 150, the turbocharged models, the Civic model, we're taking orders now, and that's an $18,900 engine. Okay. Yeah. People ask me, how come you kind of like say on the forum that you have all these models when it's really the same engine, like the 150? In fact, I've joked with people and say, well, we got a 140, a 150, a 160, a 170, because it's all based on how much boost you put out, right? Mm -hmm. And how big of an intercooler and how big of a radiator you put. So it's a very capable engine, and we can have you know a variety of models of engine based on that new Civic engine. Now, as I understand, there's a number of airframes that are starting to look at. We've seen uh, adaptations for the Sea Ray, and you mentioned vans and so forth. Anything that you're looking at out there that you'd really like to take a shot at? Well, I now have an LX, LSX myself, um, and I have two customers that have their aircraft in my shop. So the Sea Ray, we tried the Sea Ray with the 110 engine, mm -hmm. which was uh, one of our first Honda engines. And we were okay, you know, we weren't the most powerful. We were like the least expensive alternative. Now with the 130, we are the least expensive, yet the most powerful. So that's an exciting avenue. Uh, I've designed some things for that engine now where we're moving it forward slightly on the root tube, extending the uh, prop shaft a little bit in the back so we can shift the CG and get a little bit of weight off the tail wheel. We have one flying and it just jumps out of the water. So that's exciting. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Aero TV is brought to you by Explore No Limits Flying in the FAA Certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best-selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero.